since so many of our questions have been referred to the DOJ and to the White House Counsel's Office, I'm sure you can understand that we're in sort of information <laughs> blackout. Would you invite a DOJ official to take our questions here? Uh, to the briefing. No, you would have to go to the Department of Justice. That is not, it, this is a, a legal matter that is currently happening at the Department of Justice. Frustration mounting with the White House as reporters accuse the administration of a so-called information blackout. Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre referring questions to the Justice Department and White House counsel more than 20 times during yesterday's briefing. Let's bring in Republican Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. It's an interesting trick to ref as a press secretary to refer people to the counsel's office because the counsel's office never takes a press call. They always refer it back to the press office, so <laughs> the reporters know what they're going to get. Senator, the Quinnipiac poll came out and said Americans think 60 percent to 22 that Biden acted inappropriately in the way he handled those documents. Do you think it's do you think we will ever get to the bottom of it? Yeah, Dana, those 60 percent plus of Americans are correct. Uh, I, I think I'd point out the hypocrisy here in Joe Biden and his team's response. They keep saying, oh, this is a legal matter. Go talk to the Department of Justice. Well, the Department of Justice is not supposed to talk to the media. But someone who's being investigated can talk to the media. There's nothing to stop Joe Biden from explaining how those documents got into his home garage or his office, why they weren't secured. Uh, and so forth. Um, of course, he had no problem talking about Donald Trump's uh, classified documents last summer. He saddled up his high horse and rode it hard then. This is all just scandal management and hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. In fact, the second point I'd make, and this oh, is probably ahead. more important for most, you know, this is more important for most Americans, is the double standard here at play from the Department of Justice. When they found out that Donald Trump might have had classified information at Mar-a-Lago, they sent an FBI team to raid that site. With Joe Biden, they allowed his own partisan lawyers to search his home and search his office. This is kind of like you see in other cases in which law enforcement has been weaponized on behalf of partisan friends. Last summer, for instance, you had FBI raids at the homes of pro-life activists for the grave crime of singing hymns in front of abortion clinics. Meanwhile, crisis pregnancy centers had been vandalized and even firebombed, and we still don't have a single arrest in any of those cases. But I think that's probably more troubling to most Americans is the unfair fair and uneven enforcement of the law. Right. I'm sure that uh, your military experience makes you really think about that as well. I should point out that the Justice Department said yesterday that they're not, ha they haven't told the White House not to comment on this. So to your point, the White House could clear it up. The president says that the lawyers won't let him look at the documents, but as commander in chief, you would imagine that he would want to do that. So let me also ask you about uh, Ukraine. And Russia, there's a big meeting tomorrow with all of Ukraine and, and the supporters of Ukraine. The New York Times has this headline that the U.S. warms to helping Ukraine target Crimea. The Biden administration is considering the argument that Kyiv needs the power to strike at the Ukrainian <coughs> peninsula annexed by Russia in 2014. Boy, I could talk to you about this for a long time, but tell me what you know about the Biden administration at this point. Well, we should have given uh, Ukraine this kind of intelligence and the weapon systems they need to strike critical Russian military sites on Crimea going back more than a year. This is just another example how going back more than a year, the Biden administration's decisions have made this war bloodier and longer than it should have been and perhaps tempted Vladimir Putin to invade in the first place. There's a long series of instances going back before this war started in which Ukraine asked for certain kinds of weapon systems or intelligence to defend their own territory. President Biden refused to give it to them. Russia invaded. Russia made advances. The Ukrainian army valiantly stopped them. And then finally, reversed himself months later and provided those exact kinds of weapons or intelligence mm -hmm. systems. And it made it, again, the war bloodier and more protracted. We're still doing it. You know, the Biden administration is, is still reluctant to provide this intelligence to strike actual installations in Crimea as opposed to supply rights. They're still not supplying the kind of long range weapon systems that Ukraine needs to strike the bases from which Russia is launching these terrible missile attacks on civil civilian targets inside Ukraine. It's still a series of half measures that mm -hmm. is making the war longer than it has to be. One very quick question. Did you see that the German defense minister, the German leader, has said that they won't supply tanks unless the U.S. supplies separate tanks? I mean, what kind of partners do that to each other in the lead-up to a meeting like this tomorrow? 
Yeah, I think this is just the German chancellor again trying to manage his own domestic politics as opposed to looking at the battlefield realities. I hope he changes course. And for that matter, I hope the Biden administration agrees that we can provide some of our tanks. Now, it is the case that Germany's tanks uh, are a little bit better suited for Ukraine's army and their supply and logistics systems. But I'm confident, given the weapon systems we've already provided to Ukraine, that we could also support U.S. Abram made tanks going to Ukraine as well, even if those German Leopard tanks are going to be going in at higher numbers, not just from Germany, but from other friendly nations like Poland and Finland okay. and other countries who have them and are willing to supply them if Germany will just give the green light. Okay. Senator Tom Cotton, thank you. Have a good day. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.